So let's head around the back garden and you might notice there that I have a few new plants and um, my friend gave me them. They're actually corn plants and I popped them in here because this area gets full sun and they're in a grid formation so four down four across and you do it this way because um, corn plants are actually um, wind pollinated so this is the best way to plant them to ensure that I got lovely juicy delicious cobs in about probably in about maybe six weeks time I have some sugar cane mulch that I need to put around all of these plants um, to try and retain as much water as possible. Um, I've also put in a couple of Cosmos. These are the Bright Lights Cosmos. There's a Zinnia behind there and there was two Amaranth's um, little seedlings but they died off. And over here in the raised garden bed area <laughs> There are plants in there, I promise. They're just so small. I've got most of my tomato plants in here and they, they're really stunted the growth. Um, I have been watering them, but um, it's just a combination of things. It could it possibly be all the smoke every day um, blocking out the sun or just like, you know, affecting the leaves and the foliage? I'm not quite sure. Has anyone had any experience with this before? And this is my little nursery section. Um, I put a lot of my perennial plants in here that um, you know I want to keep alive. Um, uh, so I just put them all in one section, and I'm going to water them. Um, I've got some like carnations, Queen Anne's thimble. I have a dahlia in here. I have some lilies. I do over there. I put in a um, an okra plant. Um, so I'll be able to harvest from that if it grows. Let's hope it does. So I have a few things to show you in here. And firstly, I have a few pots at the entryway. And this is a plant I'm quite excited about. It's an amaranth. It's called a tricolor perfecta. Um, it's an ornamental plant and you can see there it has a kind of chocolate brown colour and green and it's meant to have yellow and crimson as well. So I'm excited to see this plant grow. And over here, by the entryway into the raised garden beds, um, I put in some be bean seedlings. Um, some of them are doing okay, so there's a couple of red noodle beans, and then others not so well. Some of them have disappeared, and over on this side, oh my goodness, the slugs and snails this year have been shocking. They're absolutely eating everything. Well, everything might be an exaggeration, but so many of my plants, particularly my beans, um, a lot of beans in the bean fort have been um, chewed away and here and over near the back garden as well. So I think I know what I'll be doing this weekend. I'll be sowing some more of these. And over here I have some um, capsicums developing. There's one there and then there's a larger one over here. If I move this one out of the way you can see. And this is a plant that I overwintered from last year. Um, so that's exciting to see that. And then also I have um, this chili plant which is the Joe's Long Chili. Um, and you can see there that there's also some chilies on this plant with plenty of flowers as well so lots more to come in this bed I had a couple of my um, Thai um, tomato plants Thai pink egg tomato plants and I've only got one left now and it's looking not looking great I must cut off that foliage there um, so I've just replaced it with some basil I bought these little basil plants from a local cafe um, so hopefully they'll do a bit better and I also put in um, a sunflower here that's the red velvet sunflower but I did notice a couple of things over here I've got my hollyhocks I've got one flower on it there and then I've also got my um, Lebanese cucumber and you can see there that I've got some cucumbers coming along this is one of my tomato beds, so I did put some petunias on the front there and some of the African marigolds. But if we take a closer look, um, this one I had to replace, that's a Tommy Toe tomato. But if we have a look over in this bed, there's a lot going on with them. Um, they're not looking the best. 
um, a lot of the foliage has been eaten um, I'm thinking I might give them a good sea soil feed and try and boost the plants up um, I'm just still waiting for them to you know take off and it's just been so slow like this time last year I think I was already starting to harvest tomatoes so I've come down near the back a few things to show you in here you may notice it looks completely different it's cleared out except for that um, milk thistle plant I need to remove that <laughs> I've kind of been putting it off because it's so spiky but what I have done in here is um, I have I went down to my local nursery and I picked up some potted colours so I put these really bright pink petunias in there and then some of these um, blue salvias so I bought them and such a good value as well they're three dollars each and you know they'll fill out that space nicely but then I also put in here I put in some sunflowers I've got one there and I've got one up at the top as well just up there and then all around there I've got some different um, cosmos um, quite small to see at the moment but they are in there and I still need to put my beans in this section along here and then that area will be finished and planted up and let's cross our fingers that everything actually grows I really hope it does this has been a long time coming. This is my blue rottenest daisy flower, my native Australian flower that I grew from seed. And you may remember that I um, sowed these, some billy buttons um, and some other natives. And pretty much these were the only ones, or this plant was the only one that I got out of the whole load that I sowed. But it's great motivation now. And next year I'm only going to get better at it and um, hopefully I'll have a bit more success it's just one step at a time isn't it when you garden you learn every year and you gain more and more experience and over there beside the blue rot nest daisy I have something else going on which is exciting these are my um, yellow button squash or paddy pans and I can't believe it but I'm starting to get some um, some of them developing on the plant. I reckon by next week I'll be able to harvest these. That's the area around the back. Things are still quite small in there. I might show you there a bit more next week. And here's another example of where I have my beans. So some of the plants are all right, but you can see there that those ones are completely eaten. Um, this is an amaranth love lies bleeding, which I transferred from another area in the garden. It's self-seeded. And I bought some more um, annuals, so these are some coleus. Um, I put these in quite a while ago. There's some more um, marigolds and a couple of um, eggplants. I had great intentions with eggplants this year. I sowed so many different varieties and oh, it was just a bit of a disaster. They just didn't do well at all. Um, so this year I ended up buying a couple of plants well more than a couple I have these two here so these are I think this is the little fingers eggplant um, so I have these two and I have some more over in the raised garden beds it was over here where I transferred that amaranth you can see I've got a big patch of them self seeded so I dug up some of them and I'm over here now to show you the cartoon plant which is flowering isn't it beautiful such a lovely plant to have in the garden it's very dramatic I think it's nice to see some flowers the dahlias are putting on a bit of growth as well but I did want to show you down here what I put in so I have a mixture of pumpkins and cucumbers that one there is really cool it's my friend's um, cucumber seeds which I got off her and um, she has this awesome looking cucumber that self seeds every year it looks like a, a lemon cucumber um, but it's not it's different I, I can't wait to show you them and um, I think you'll really like them and then I have this one I can't pronounce it, so I'll pop the name up I tried to actually grow that last year and that was the one pumpkin that didn't work out for me and um, so this year I put in um, three seedlings and one of them seems to be taken off so that's quite good so hopefully now that will develop like into a really nice strong plant and I'll get some pumpkins off it 
and then this one down here is the Delicanti. I grew that last year. It's such a cute little pumpkin. Um, it's got lovely little stripes. It's really nice. It has a nice nutty taste to it. And then down here, um, this is a different type of um, cucumber. I'm trying. I'll pop the name up on the screen. And I'm interested to see how these taste. It's my first year growing them. Here is my Buddleia plant and it's starting to open up with all its gorgeous purple flowers. Hopefully now this will attract some more bees into my garden because I feel like at the moment I haven't really seen that much. Um, I have to remember this for next year. I need a better transition between spring and summer. Um, I feel like I had a full on beautiful summer full of colour and now <laughs> there's like this massive gap where there's not that much going on in the garden.